Hello, I'm Joe Casa. Welcome to this presentation, the Communications Requirement Evaluation and Assessment Prototype, a case study of a systems engineering educational product. The authors are Joe Casa, Stephen Cook, Anthony Pelgrim, and two of the students who were in the program. So for just under 20 minutes, I'm going to discuss the purpose of CREEP as an educational case study, its goals, the schedule, the results, and the lessons learned. The CREEP is explained in a companion paper. In short, it's a project that looked into extending requirements engineering tools in a design to inventory situation to ensure that the feasibility of communications equipment selected to meet the needs of a communication system would actually meet the needs of the communication system when there were several different combinations of equipment in the inventory, some of which would and some of which would not meet the needs. And a working prototype was one of the outputs of the CREEP. The goals of CREEP, the educational case study, were different. The primary goal was to produce systems engineering process products for educational purposes. In my experience at UMUC and also at the University of South Australia, I found it difficult to get hold of commercially produced documents because companies just don't want to share them. So since we need these process products to show to students as examples of how to and how not to produce these documents, we had to produce our own. So that was one of the goals of CREEP. Also to document the project as an educational case study and test and used categorized requirements in process charts, CRIP charts, which have been discussed in papers in earlier INCOSI symposia and I'll give you a brief summary of them in a few minutes. The schedule was planned to cover about a semester. So it started on the 19th of February, would go through system requirements review, preliminary design review, critical design review, and delivery readiness review right before the INCOSI 2001 symposium. While we were at the symposium, the students would have a chance to fix up any defects discovered at the DRR, and so termination was scheduled for two weeks after the DRR on the Friday, which was the last day of the week. It also happened to be Friday the 13th, a factor that will become apparent shortly. Project management consisted of a project board, Stephen Cook and myself, the management team, Stephen Cook and myself, the design group, Anthony Pilgrim and students, the test group, Anthony Pilgrim and students, and we basically followed a tailored version of the PRINCE2 management methodology. The deliverables were the process product or the documentation for further use by CREEP as we re-examine and extend it. Other classes in systems and software engineering that could use those process products for various purposes. The working software and the review packages from the various milestone reviews. The weekly schedule included three meetings. The students would be working full-time on the project. We would get together Monday and Wednesdays to have working meetings. This would be a chance for the students and to discuss what they've done with the customers, namely myself and Stephen Cook, and to discuss how to do the work and some of the problems that we're having with management, namely Stephen Cook and myself. And then on Friday we would have the weekly management meetings that covered work completed during the week, work planned for the next week, and arising problems or questions. And every now and again, according to the schedule, there would be a milestone review. By the time we got to the SRR, we were one week behind schedule. The work that was completed was significant. We had come up with a work breakdown structure based on requirements. So all the work was based on activities that could be traced to implementing the requirements. This is critical for the use of the CRIP charts. The students had done some background research. They developed a statement of the problem. We'd come up with user scenarios for how the CREEP would be used. And 32 requirements had been written. These covered programmatic requirements and constraints, as well as user requirements. So before I present the CRIP chart for complexity at the SRR, I'll try and explain how CRIP charts work. The CRIP process is basically as follows. 
one needs to categorize all the requirements for a system then quantify each category into ranges place each requirement in each category in a range and then monitor the changes in the state of each of the categories of requirements between reporting milestones and let me explain what I mean by that requirements may be categorized in various ways the first way is by priority by complexity estimated cost to implement and security classification categorizing requirements like this provides a check as to whether the requirement is really useful or not for example if it's a complex requirement with a low priority do you really need it or if it has a high estimated cost to implement and a low priority again do you really need it and then in each category you can set up a scale of 1 to 10 the rules for allocating the ranges and requirements into the ranges are once the rules for setting up a range have been set they do not change for the duration of the project but requirements can move within those ranges from one to the other as you discover more about them as the project goes through its life cycle each requirement may exist in one of five states during the production process the first state is that the requirement has been identified but no work has started on implementing it the second state is work has started on the components that will perform the functions that meet that requirement the third state is those components have been completed the fourth state is they're in test and the fifth state is it's been accepted so work on the project to produce parts of the project that meet that particular requirement has now been complete so the crypt chart starts to look like this the columns are the five states that the requirement can be in and the rows are the ranges within the category each cell actually contains three numbers the first number is the expected from last time the middle number is the actual that has been achieved since the last reporting period and the third digit is the number planned to be achieved at the next reporting period this shows progress if present as the numbers move up and along and the fact that problems may exist now it may not identify the problems but it will show that problems exist as I'll demonstrate and the way the chart is used is it is used to compare changes over time so you need to look at the chart over a series of milestone reviews and what I'm showing here is how the numbers progress the planned from a previous milestone becomes the estimated for this milestone the work done becomes the actual etc and what you can do by just looking at this is first of all you can take a look at the planned and see if the resources that are committed to implementing it are reasonable so here's the crypt chart for the complexity category at SRR there are no requirements in categories 9 and 2 so they've been blanked out and you can see that the first entry in the identified column is blank so really that value is meaningless before the first milestone because you don't know how many to expect in this particular case in category 10 one was identified in category 8 one was identified and there were a whole lot in category 1 low complexity that were identified so 21 category 1 requirements were identified and they plan to identify 13 more following SRR that's what that chart says if you look at the in production column you can see that a number of requirements in various categories are scheduled to move from identified but no work to work in production to meet those requirements when the requirements were prioritized they ended up in five categories and on such a small project such a distribution is fair so 26 priority one requirements were identified by the time we got to the SRR two priority two one priority three and three priority five for a total of 32 requirements by the time we got to PDR we were 
four weeks behind schedule. But we had processed the review item discrepancies from the SRR. 13 had been received, 14 had been rejected, 4 had been noted but no action taken. These dealt with items that were out of scope. 4 had been accepted, 2 were new requirements, 2 of the requirements had changed, and the students had been introduced to the concept of frames. A prototype user interface had been developed. The parabolic relationships for the communication links had been developed. Some of the database designs were complete. Parts of the test plan were done. And the software language had been chosen. A sensitivity analysis had been performed. And the choice was Java. So the crit chart for the requirements categorized by complexity at PDR looks like this. In categories 10, 8, 7, and 6, we're meeting the schedule, but no progress is planned to complete that work in the following reporting period. Now, that may indicate a problem, or it may not. In category 6, we do plan to complete the work during the reporting period. In range 4, we expected to put one requirement into production and it moved all the way through completed and is now in test. In range 1, we expected to identify a further 13 requirements following the SRR and we actually identified 15. So the crypt chart for the category priority at PDR looks like this. In range 1, we expected to identify 26 requirements, but only identified 12. Nope, that's not right, because 14 of them are in production. We hadn't planned it, but they ended up being in production, and the chart shows that by the next reporting period, all 26 will be in production. Are we ahead of schedule, or is it poor management? Time will tell. In range 2, we didn't expect to identify any more requirements, but if you look back at the last chart, which you can't do, you'll see that there are two additional requirements that showed up as a result of the RIDs from the SRR. And in range three, we're behind schedule. We expected to identify one. We didn't. And we expect to identify it next time. And we seem to be okay in range five. So at CDR, we're two weeks behind schedule, but we managed to catch up two weeks. As far as the work that was done, we pro processed the RIDs from the PDR. We've completed the interface design, and we've got the functional and modular composition of the knowledge database. The user interface is complete. There are linkages between the scenarios and the modules, and the test plan contains test objectives, batch test, conceptual test scripts and test milestones. But when you look at the CRIP charts, you can see that there are problems. Look at the complexity category. You can see that in range 6, we've got one in production, but we expected to have it completed and it wasn't. And so we're planning for completion next period. Similarly, we plan to have that one requirement in range 4 accepted, but it wasn't. And in range 1, although we expected to have 21 requirements in production, we've only got 8, and we're planning to have all 21 in production next time. We did manage to identify the 13 that we expected. Similarly, the priority category backs up the fact that there may be problems. We expected to have 26 range 1 requirements in production, but only 14 went into production. So we're planning to have the remaining in production by the next reporting period. In range 2, although we expected to have one in production, we actually had two in production. One still stays in identified. And by the end of the next reporting period, we plan to have all three of those remaining requirements in range 2 in production. And we expected to have that last requirement that's being worked on out of test, and it isn't. It's still in test. Down in range 5, something is going on. We expected that all those three requirements 
would move into the production, but they didn't. And the chart shows in the identified column that we now expect them to stay in the identified column. So they're not moving into production. There's been a change since the last reported milestone. Needs to be investigated. By the time the DRR came, we were on schedule, maintaining our two-week slippage. The work that had been completed, would we had not received any RIDs at the CDR. The satellite communications module was completed. We had some test results. The software and the documentation was completed. But the CRIP chart shows that there are problems. In Category 10, we'd planned one to be in production, and it's accepted and ready to go. In Category 8, the same thing. In Category 7, the same thing. So we're either way ahead of schedule, or there's a lot of poor management. Similarly, in Category 1, there are problems. We had planned to put 27 into production. We'd only put 7 into production. We'd planned for 7 to be completed, but it still hasn't happened, even though 15 have been accepted and none was planned. Management needs to look in and see what's happening. The priority category also showed problems. In priority 1, only 20 have been accepted. In priority 2, only 2 have been accepted. And we're still planning to complete by the end of the two-week period. You'll also notice that the schedule could use a little more planning, perhaps, because we jumped from in production all the way through to test and accepted in the last reporting period. So in the few moments that I have left, I'd like to share some lessons learned. It's very important to develop a common vision of the product. It took more time to explain what to do than do it ourselves to these students. It got down to the point where two out of the four students were asked to find another project very forcefully. It's important to take into account the multicultural and the linguistics and the written English skills of overseas students, at least in this project, need improving and it is very important on student teams or any other project teams to select personnel for success. To quickly summarize, the goals were partially met. The creep concept was demonstrated. We could build such a tool. Some system engineering process products have been documented for later use, and crypt charts have been shown to be a valuable tool in project management and can readily be implemented in a simple spreadsheet. So what do you think? Any comments?